Good morning, primary boys and girls. I'm so glad you made it through that storm that we had last Sabbath here in our story corner and that you made it back so that we can finish our story about Noah and the ark today. Okay, now came the great moment for which all in the ark had been waiting so long, the opening of the great door that God had closed. At last it creaked open as if moved by the same mighty hand that had closed it. How glad everybody must have been to step outside and breathe the sweet fresh air again. Yes, the door opened and we have Noah and his sons all out here looking around at the world after the flood and then of course we have Mrs. Noah and then their three sons wives okay so thankful was Noah for the way God had saved him and his family from the flood that the very first thing he did when he went ashore was to build an altar and offer in sacrifice up on it at least one of every clean beast and of every clean fowl. And that was a real sacrifice just then when the only animals in the whole world were those that he had brought with him on in the ark. So they built an altar here. God. God was so pleased that Noah had remembered to say thank you for his deliverance that he that God said, I will not again curse the ground any more, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now at God's command all the other birds and beasts were released. What a sight it must have been! What a whirring of wings as the great eagles, storks, herons, and flamingos leaped into the air and flew out to freedom, with robins and sparrows, thrushes fluttering and hopping along behind them. How the nightingales must have trilled, and the blackbirds have squawked, and the mockingbirds have sung everybody's song at once in that moment of glad liberation. Okay, so our story is telling us that all the animals came out of the ark here. So we've got some cows, and we've got some donkeys, and we've got some lions, and some goats. And let's see, we have little tiny bunny rabbits, and we've got some monkeys. Oh, where are we going to put our monkeys? Okay, we're going to put our swans over here in our little lake we have over here. And we have our giraffes and our elephants and our sheep. Oh, we even have a great big bear. Oh, and all those birds, yes. Flying. They must have been so happy to fly after all that time in the ark. Listen, lions and tigers, buffaloes and hippos, elephants, giraffes, sheep and goats, dogs and cats hurried through the great doorway, jostling one another as they bounded down the ramp in their eagerness to get into the open again. And what a noise they must have made as each one sounded forth his joy. The lions roaring, the elephants trumpeting, the horses neighing, the oxen lowing, the donkeys braying, and all the little dogs barking their loudest. Many of the animals disappeared at once, racing down the mountainside till they were out of sight. Others stayed around, liking human companionship. And Noah may well have wondered what he would do with so many if they continued to stay near the ark. But two by two and group by group, they began to move away, wandering north, south, east, and west, seeking food and shelter. 
at last only some of the cows and sheep, goats, and of course the little dog and cat were left. Meanwhile, Noah and his family were looking around at the wild-looking place to which the ark had brought them. It was, sad. it was a sad sight that met their gaze. Everywhere was wreckage and ruin caused by the raging waters. Great trees lay uprooted. Lovely hills had been swept clean of soil, leaving nothing but bare rock. Mountains had become scarred and jagged. Once fruitful plains were deserts. Not a single human dwelling was to be seen anywhere. Of all the beautiful homes they remembered, not a trace remained. All had been smashed to matchwood by the towering tidal waves that had swept over everything when the flood began. It was enough to break their hearts. As they stood there viewing the desolate scene, they felt the earth shake under them, perhaps, for there must have been many a quake as the earth settled after the great eruptions when all the fountains of the deep were broken up. No doubt they felt afraid and lonely on that shuddering mountainside. Well may they have wondered what terrible thing was going to happen next. Then, of a sudden, Noah looked upward. And there in the sky he saw something that he had never seen before. As though trying to encircle the ruined earth with arms of love was a glorious, glowing arch of many colors. Scar Scarus daring to take a breath, they all stood looking at it, struck dumb with amazement. What was it? What would it? What could it mean? It was the first rainbow. And as they watched in wonderment, God drew near and said, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come to pass. When I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. It was God's way of saying, I have never not forgotten you, nor shall I ever forget you, or my promises to you. When you see the rainbow and I see the rainbow, we will remember each other. Only a God of love could have thought of speaking to his children in such a way at such a time, having lost everything, money, home, all, save life itself, and what they had brought with them in the ark. These poor homeless pilgrims surely needed a message of comfort and hope such as this. But now their hearts cheered, their courage renewed. They told themselves again that all would be well at last. How good to know that God was still with them, that God still loved them. And so hand in hand with him they went forth through the shining arch above them to build a new world with him. You know what, boys and girls? All through, over thousands of years, we still look up and we see rainbows. I bet some of you have seen a rainbow this spring. I know I've seen rainbows. And when we see rainbows, it still reminds us of God's beautiful promise that he he is always with us and that he will never, ever again send a flood that destroys the whole world, just like that promise he made to Noah. I have some rainbow pictures that I want to share with you this morning. These rainbow pictures each uh, came from a different place. And the first picture, you may recognize where it was taken at. It was taken in the parking lot at the Spokane Valley Church. It's a beautiful rainbow. And then, just the other day, Teacher Dusty uh, called uh, Theodore and Frederick and I out on the deck so that we could see a rainbow. It was a unique rainbow. 
as you see it there in the picture, we didn't look out across the sky. We had to look straight up in the sky above our house. And it was right up above us between the clouds in an arch. You can see it there in the picture. And then I have a beautiful picture that Trisha Thorman, a lot of you know her, she took this picture a couple weeks, maybe a week ago, and I thought it was so pretty. I asked her if I could show it to you today. And then just today, um, Teacher Dusty and I have a, a friend. Uh, her name is Stacy Coy, and she sent this beautiful picture, and she said that I could share it with you today. Uh, they live up north from where we all live, and I just thought it was so pretty that you would like to see it. Yes, rainbows are are still special and still beautiful just like God meant them to be. And you know what? In our Bibles we are told about another rainbow and you might want to look this up in your Bible and read about it this afternoon. If you look up rainbow in your Bible and heaven you're gonna find that there is a rainbow in heaven. When we get to heaven there's going to be a beautiful rainbow over God's throne. And there's going to be a rainbow when Jesus comes back in the clouds to take us to heaven. So I think rainbows are pretty special. Okay, let's finish up our lesson story here. We belong to a special family. Our family of believers includes those in our churches and our schools, as well as our families at home. And we, too, have been given a special work to do, just like Noah and his family. We will go through a lot together over the years, and, ex and the experiences we share will bring us closer together. Just like I bet Noah's family was a lot closer together after they spent all that time on the ark. And God has given, our, God has given us our own rainbows Blessings and promises. He will help us to do what he has asked. Noah's family was well cared for inside and outside of the ark. They were thankful to God for his love and protection. When you see a rainbow, think of God's love for you and thank him for keeping his rainbow promise and all of his promises. Have you been learning your memory verse this week? Let's say it together now. I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. And that verse is in Genesis 9.15. I'm so glad that you came this morning so that we could learn from the story of Noah it's been fun learning about Noah for the past three weeks or so. And, yes, let's remember that God always keeps his promises. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful week. Let's have closing prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we got to spend this time together on Sabbath morning and that your Bible tells us about the promise you made to Noah and his family and it reminds us that you have promised to take care of us and that you always keep your promises. Be with the primary boys and girls this week. Keep them safe. Bring us all back to Sabbath school wherever we are next Sabbath. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful week.